One of the reasons that doing drive-by evaluations of your field is that sometimes those end rows mask the severity of the problem out in the rest of the field. And so you, you get out through the end rows and often what you find is something like this where uh, you have ex extreme drought stress. It's been here for some time, long enough that it has affected the elongation of the stalk, ending up with really short plants. And of course the striking thing about this part of the field is not only are they short, but these guys are actually uh, have the tassels out and they're shedding pollen. So one of the striking things about a field, cornfield under drought stress is the fact that it often rolls up its leaves in response to that drought. This leaf rolling is initially uh, uh, maybe an attractive posture of defense by the plant because as it's rolling up, it's not transpiring as much moisture through the plant. Therefore, its water use is decreasing. And in the initial stages of leaf rolling, you may actually reduce the leaf temperature, uh, which may help it under hot days. The problem with this defensive posture, though, is that when it goes on for days or weeks, uh, it begins to take a toll on the plant because in addition maybe to the positive uh, aspect of not using as much water when it's under stress, uh, you are also not uh, allowing in as much CO2 into the plant in order to, to keep photosynthesis running. And so eventually uh, the leaves will, themselves will begin to deteriorate, the chlorophyll will begin to degrade, photosynthesis continues to uh, go downhill very fast, and the plant eventually begins to die. One of the consequences of that, of that is the fact that the plants stop growing in height, uh, stalk elongation slows down or maybe stops, that's why this area of the field is as short as it is. And when you look really close at these leaves, you will see evidence of the fact that the chlorophyll is degrading, the color just isn't what it ought to be, you can see patches that are beginning to fade and almost turn a gray color, and that's the chlorophyll beginning to shut down and, and beginning to disappear. One of the most common things that happens during a severe drought is that the elongation of the silks is stunted, and by the time they come out, all the pollen is shed. So we'll open up this ear and take a look at uh, where the silk elongation is on it. Uh, silk elongation can easily be retarded under severe drought stress. There's nothing necessarily symptomatic about this ear that would tell you it was drought stress that's holding it back. But given the fact that the tassel was out, was shedding pollen, in fact was nearly completely finished shedding pollen, and you open up this ear, take a look at these silks, and uh, even when you lay it sideways and put them together, uh, they are still a long ways from emerging from the husk of that leaf. And unfortunately, by the time this particular ear would have gotten its silks outside of the husks, all the pollen in this area of the field, at least, would probably have been gone. And so this, this is an extreme situation of drought stress. Uh, you could argue the case that it, uh, in a way it doesn't matter if the silks and pollen are going to synchronize or not. It's under so much drought stress that the young ovules, that even if they are fertilized, would quickly abort anyway. And so this is the big fear around the state now where uh, drought stress is really severe, is that even with rain on a field like this, um, pollen shed is so far advanced now uh, out in this little area of the field that uh, a good soaking rain tonight would have minimal effect, unfortunately, because so much of the damage has already been done.